Underground bases in Space Engineers are a bad idea. In this video, I'm going to dive into this topic, look at it from both a server perspective, a player perspective, and everything in between. If you disagree with my opinion, you're welcome to comment down in the comment section where we can open up a bit of a debate on the topic, but let's begin. Now, let's descend into the chaos that is an underground base siege. Picture this, a well-prepared attacker, armed to the teeth, launches an assault on an unsuspecting underground fortress. The defenders, thinking their hidden stronghold is impenetrable, brace for impact. As the attackers breach the hidden depths, chaos ensues, tight tunnels become battlegrounds, and the defenders, once cosy underground, have transformed into a claustrophobic war zone. Both sides found themselves trapped, desperately trying to outsmart each other in the maze of passages. Then, all of a sudden, the attacker remembers that he can cut through walls faster than going through your blast doors. He can bypass your defences by using a hand drill that cuts through the voxels like butter, bypassing all your defensive systems and cutting straight for your loot room. All your defences are pointless and all that time constructing wasted. And to add to the effect, he then places a ton of warheads right under your base without you being able to do anything about it and blows them all up. Your underground base is useless. The frustration on both sides is overwhelming. Players are unable to escape or penetrate the defences. The attackers have their base breached or breached in a way that they didn't think was fair. And this resorts to heated negotiations that end up very, very spicy. The subterranean standoff turns into a digital Mexican standoff with neither side willing to budge and tempers flare. A disaster in the making. This unique brand of gameplay frustration is what underground bases often bring to the table. It's not about winning or losing, it's about the confined space intensifying the conflict, turning what could be a strategic battle into a mess of emotion and grievances. And that's why I think if you are going to have underground bases on your server, and with three years of experience of running servers, you need some ground rules in place. Players need to know what they can do. Can they bypass you for defenses with drills? Are they allowed to completely wipe you out underground? What are the ground rules for these base attacks? A server without any rules within this department is just going to lead to frustration. So underground bases do need some rules surrounding them. Um, or else it's just going to be a mess. So next time, when you're considering an underground base in Space Engineers, remember there is potential for frustration lurking just beneath the surface. But let's continue on. Now let's drill into the technical challenges that make underground bases more than just a dig in the park. It all starts with the very essence of Space Engineers' ability to meticulously track every voxel change. In the grand cosmos of Space Engineers, every alteration in the terrain is recorded, creating a living, dynamic world. However, this meticulous record keeping comes at a cost, performance. The game engine has to continuously juggle an ever-growing database of voxel changes, and that's where the trouble begins. Now, as more and more underground facilities are constructed on the server, the game grapples with the sheer volume of information drastically inflating the file size of the world, leading to lag spikes that can feel like navigating through custard. Render times stretch, load times become a test of patience, and what was meant to be a seamless gaming experience turns into a stuttering struggle for smooth gameplay. It's not just an inconvenience, it's a performance quagmire that affects everyone sharing the server. Underground bases designed for their stealth and security ironically end up burdening the entire of the Space Engineers server. Remember, in the vastness of space, the choices we make in our virtual underground bunkers impact the entire shared experience. Now let's dive into the human element of this subterranean saga, the inherent laziness that clashes with the laborious process of getting our ships and grids out of our bases. And you might not have thought about this. And remember, when you're working with a bigger group, you've got to keep on top of which airlock doors are open and closed and maybe even implement a lockdown procedure for when you're attacked. And remember, most of the times that you're going to be attacked is since everything's laid so deep with inside your facility, you're going to have to navigate through an intricate network of tunnels and chambers that might be quite frustrating in itself, leading to a lot of players that come under attack or are told that they're going to be attacked to simply not log on out of laziness. Remember, us human beings are creatures of comfort. We crave convenience, especially in our leisure time. So if you build a base, an underground base that's specifically designed for security, 
it's inadvertently going to become a fortress of inconvenience, getting your grids out becoming a task that demands more effort than a lot of average players are willing to invest, so you end up with an underground car park, pretty much. So far, I have been quite negative, and I understand that, and I'd love to hear your comments down in the comment section of what you think the advantages and disadvantages are of building a base underground. Well, let's have a look at some of these advantages that were put forward by community members. The first one, and the most important one, is stealth. Underground bases provide an unparalleled advantage in staying hidden from prying eyes. And when I say staying hidden, this could mean you're a new player who's learning the game. Staying hidden is a great way of surviving the early stages from other players, and also drones if you do happen to be playing against AI. On the other hand, if you're building up different ships, uh, you don't want to display your capabilities because other players can feel threatened and want to attack you or stop you from building something up before you construct it if it's out there in the open and able to be scouted and viewed. So staying hidden and staying concealed with inside a bunker does bring some advances in that department. Now next up is protection from orbital threats. And this is a fear of so many players. We're talking about orbital bombardments, players shooting you from with rail guns from above. It does happen. People dropping massive cluster munitions on your base. It does happen. And the natural rock overhead acts as a shield. So this is a great advantage. Now, the next advantage is something I didn't really think of. And this is environmental immunity. So underground, you're protected from lightning strikes. You're protected from meteor storms. You're protected from most of the problems that happen on the surface, including the weird weather patterns that sometimes exist in space engineers, allowing you to stay productive underground. So we've talked about some of the positives and we've talked about some of the negatives of underground bases. But I want to talk about building one and some of the considerations that you might want to have. Now, the first thing I want you to consider is entrances. When it comes to an entrance, it needs to be secure and hidden. The other thing to consider here is you need more than one entrance and exit. Now, you might think this is a security concern, and it is. It means that the attackers will have multiple ways in, but it'll also give you the option of multiple ways out. While attackers are busy at one entrance, you can deploy from another and attack them from a different direction. Getting the ability to actually get out from your fortress of solitude will give you the best advantage ships fighting in narrow passageways and corridors doesn't tend to be very effective and missile launchers and handheld rocket launchers tend to win in these situations now there's also going to be circumstances where the base door just needs to be too large the hangar to this bunker is so big you need to focus on building lots of turrets lots of fortifications layers around this entrance to stop enemy ships from getting in so plenty of turrets plenty of coverage to shoot down incoming threats and have layers to the door so multiple airlocks as well because if the outer door is breached you still want some protection from the inner door as well if you're building a custom door you want to consider how well it's held on would the enemy target these hinges blow them off to trap you inside it's another factor when coming to build an entrance and we've all seen that scene in star wars where they blast into the hangar bay and uh, well there's not much there to meet them apart from a few ground crew members that they quickly shoot out so have some internal security within your gateway as well in case it is breached now another factor of your security needs to be a security check what are you bringing back to this base if you're a fan of salvaging enemy equipment drones or other things make sure beacons are off make sure the device can't be remote controlled make sure there's no survival kits on this thing if you leave any of these on and you bring it back into your base you've pretty much built a trojan horse for the enemy they can either observe or use this device to cause some havoc or trouble at the same time if you bring back enemy devices to your base and you turn off the, your turrets to get them inside you're putting your base at a significant disadvantage so have a talk with your other faction members on what the best sort of course of approach would be if you're salvaging or you want to bring back other pieces of enemy equipment for investigation now this brings me on to the next section living quarters or a med bay area now there is no point of having one med bay i recommend multiple survival kits throughout the base for if different areas are breached that you can spawn in another consideration is to make sure you've got weapons and equipment near these survival kits and have them labeled correctly so if you are under attack you can spawn in the relevant med bay grab the equipment you need and get straight into the fight it's another area to kind of discuss with yourself or your faction mates on how you're going to handle a base being breached in multiple ways if it's breached by someone drilling 
coming into the side, if it's breached by someone blowing the door off, having a response to these sort of methods is probably going to kind of lower the anxiety and the stress when it comes to being attacked. Now the next thing we need to consider is our industrial zone and I am a strong believer of splitting our resource production, so we're talking our refining, from our production and from our resource storage. Yes, it requires more pipes and more movement through areas. And the other thing to factor in here is when building underground bases, we need to fully surround these areas with blocks so they are protected or a breach is delayed because a lot of players will stick their head in the sand and it's, it's a bit glitchy and sad, but they'll look straight through the ground, see where these components are and dig straight to them to steal all your resources or destroy your production because they know how vital these are. So let's talk command and control. And often overlooked is a good command center. I'm talking a room that is heavily reinforced with a survival kit, perfect for a last stand. But it's more than just a place to have a last stand. A good command center will have seating antennas so that you can control other elements of the base like the turrets and also ships. Imagine a situation where players are pushed in through your hangars. And I see this time and time again, when a player's base has been breached, one of the issues of them not being able to defend it is they cannot physically get back to their ship. So from the command center you remote control your ships and you use them ships to push players out of your base something not to overlook so we're moving on to talking about hangars and hangars is something that i see done in one of two ways if you build a hangar that's too small you'll struggle to get out of it it'll be really awkward and the enemy will trap you in there and on the other hand, if you build a hangar that's too open and just put lines and lines of ships or fighters, they'll be strafed if they do get breached or a stray missile comes in. So you need to take a kind of a lesson from the real world and the hangars and the ships need to be separated either with dividing blast walls or something to keep them safe until you have a chance to utilize them. And when I'm talking about utilizing them, make sure there's a remote control on board of these ships because it's not always able to get directly into the control seat and be able to control them from your command center, like I said before, is a a great other option of at least returning a bit of firepower to these hangar bays and finally make sure you have some sort of remote turret in your hangar bay it's always a great option so to wrap this video up here i am a strong believer on a multiplayer server underground bases are not good they're not good for performance they suck the living life out of a server and they also create a massive unnecessary amount of salt as people battle it out in these confined tunnels and also there's just so many easy ways of bypassing all the hard work that people have put into the defense of an underground base with cheesy space engineers tactics and i mean i know there's a lot of you who watch these videos and say well if it's part of the game it's fine and you can win at all costs and that, that's great but you're not going to be building any friends that way and sooner or later you won't have anyone to play against Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.